Walking around the site now, I found Stephen Slater, who's the new CEO of the Light Aircraft Association as from the 1st September. Welcome to Association, uh, Stephen. I hope uh, all goes well for you. Looking at the uh, SOA rally here, we've got a, well, it turned out to be a nice day, a lot of aircraft arriving. You enjoying yourself so far? Oh, absolutely. And I've got to say, it's not a new introduction to the, uh, the LAA for me. I've been a member of LAA and its predecessor, the PFA, for the uh, best part of 20 years. Uh, but I, I am deeply privileged to be here as the chief executive of an organisation uh, which has created such a fantastic event and, of course, does so much for sport flying in the UK. It, it really is the premier sport flying organisation uh, in the country, without, uh, without a doubt. Uh, I think we've got a very exciting future. Uh, we have best part of 8,000 members. Um, we have something in the region of uh, 2,500 aeroplanes uh, currently flying in the UK and about another uh, 1,500 in build or in project form. So there's a, there's a great deal going on in the future and it's, it's about the past, present and future. I mean, just looking around the aeroplanes we've got on, uh, on display here today, we've got everything from Edwardian biplanes through to state-of-the-art carbon fibre and Kevlar, Delta Wing, Canard uh, uh, aeroplanes, one of which has even flown in non-stop from Denmark, so tremendous capabilities. Uh, and it's also about the members, because with just shy of 8,000 members, we have a fantastic skill set. We've got people who literally are rocket scientists. We've got people who are uh, capable of designing and building their own aircraft in the most complex materials, some of which you know, NASA would be envious of. And at the other end of the scale, we've got very, very ordinary people from, uh, you know, postmen, garage mechanics and everybody else, all united by one single bond, which is actually the love of flying. And that is what it's all about. It's actually taking pleasure in getting airborne, something in maybe that you've made yourself or something that you've bought and restored or something that you're maybe just the custodian of for the future. And uh, the variety and, uh, dare I say it, the, uh, the enthusiasm of everybody around here is creating a real buzz for this event. And I hope that will continue on through my time as, uh, as chief executive. Our pilot coaching scheme has been going on without too much trumpeting for many years and it's a great way for pilots not just to maintain their competence and have a, a, a flight every couple of years with an instructor but it's a great way where you can actually start pushing your skill levels, push your confidence but do it in a very safe, very controlled manner and the coaching scheme is basically going to be, uh, it's now been endorsed by the Civil Aviation Authority as part of their PROUD scheme where they're trying to raise pilot standards and recognition of pilot standards and basically by completing a series of uh, specific tasks, uh, you will be able to qualify for a bronze set of wings. At the next step up, you'll have slightly more sophisticated tasks, maybe a little bit more uh, navigation work or uh, flying a longer distance, uh, flying an out and back to a, a, a different destination, maybe over water, and that will qualify you for a silver wings. Alternatively, you can actually take the handling still further, maybe do a little bit more of an adventurous flight, and uh, ultimately, you qualify for the gold wings, which will be the ultimate accolade. And this really gives us a, a, a new focus on pilot coaching. Uh, we're fantastic at the engineering side, we're fantastic at the uh, administration of the engineering and making sure that people can get in the air in as affordable a manner as possible and now we're also actually driving this forward to actually make sure that the piloting standards match that of these gorgeous aeroplanes around us. That's interesting isn't it? because the PCS really can offer a lot of things from standard flying if you like to call it that to airstrip flying, you know, farmer strips etc. They're all challenging aren't they? You know, downwind, into wind, crosswind, etc. all needs to be looked at and you know, keep safety standards up. I think that sounds like a great initiative for, for people and also um, incentive for people to really get involved. Well, one of the things is that uh, many pilots qualify maybe in their 40s or something like that. They, their family commitments are allowing them the time to, to do a discretionary uh, spend on something that they want to do. They've maybe wanted to fly for many years. And so many pilots get locked into then being with a flying school, joining a flying club, and then having to spend a couple of hundred pounds every hour just to rent an aeroplane, maybe to fly to the nearest airport and cafe and uh, have you know that 300 pound cup of coffee. Um, we're actually looking at making it a bit different. You can actually share with other people this passion for flying, I think that we all do really have. And then we can also now just have this a little bit more adventurous, maybe uh, people will can buy into a syndicate, because to be quite honest, for the cost of your years flying, you can probably buy a share in an aeroplane and fly for one third or one fourth of the cost. So you do actually have this uh, great incentive and then the pilot coaching scheme can actually put the icing on the cake for you. It's no more expensive to do this sort of aviation than, uh, say, owning a high-performance motorcycle, and lots of people do that. And I'm sure lots of people who are out there would love to be able to fly, but don't know that it actually, you know, we're not all Top Gun. We're not going to wander around with Ray-Bans on, you know, let's face it, just look at us. Uh, we're not Top Gun. We're never going to be. 
It is flying for the people, and I tell you what, the pleasure from flying comes from the flying itself. And I, I you know, I've flown about 500 hours. I can honestly say that I've paid for every single one of those that I've done. I've not been trained by the military or anything like that. I'm an ordinary bloke who's managed to get involved in aviation, managed to fix and fly a few nice aeroplanes, and I'm, I'm now in this privileged position of being chief executive of an organisation I believe passionately in. Uh, how good is that? Yeah.